Hey what's up everybody, this is Justin here, here to give my review to BDX Neo. Taking place where the series leaves off naturally, Tepe continues his quest to burst into the Machine Empire, save his brother Kotaro, and stop Raphael. However, the fights are going to be tougher, and the stakes are going to be higher than ever before. But, as an OAV series, it works excellently as a um, season 1.5. Uh, the story moves at the right pace, and the enemies are more diversively gimmick, gimmicky and intimidating at the same time that fits right into the narrative of the series. However, from what I understand, this part of the series uh, deviates from the original manga, which I have yet to read. I don't know if the, chains of, the changes at all will um, offend manga purists, but the OAV will give a conclusive ending. Since uh, Tepe is progressing on his journey, the story will maintain its high-stakes themes, and I really felt that there was a constant danger throughout it on all levels. And for those reasons, I would have to give spoilers. And the other, re uh, the other returning characters still have great exploration, and they needed character development, which made them feel much more complete. Cotton is also more loosely used, but the series presents excellent reasons for her lack of presence and do find ways to make her character significantly useful despite that. Um, what really touched me the most was the development of Marcello and Amigo, Kotaro's captors in the Underhell. Uh, they started off as totally inhumane assholes, but they are given a great redemption arc that starts in the initial series and is taken to many steps further. Uh, there's a reason why, but there, there are other reasons why I like this, but once again, I don't want to get into spoilers, so I'll leave the story and characters a 9 out of 10. The quality of the design this time, especially with the eyes, feel more reminiscent of Clamp as opposed to, let's say, the original manga author Kuramata Masami Sensei, or that of the um, old body Masami feel um, from the first series. The character designs have a much more mature sense to the, you know, the sharpness, and I felt Tepe comes too much of an adult as opposed to a teenager. Like, I'm, I think Tepe has to either be between 13 and 15. Uh, with Kuramoto Sensei's original design, I can believe that his base design for Tepe, which is also used for Seiya and Saint Seiya, and Takane Ryuji and Ringuni Kakiro, I can believe that he could be between 13 and 15. Uh, but he looks around, he could be 20 in the anime OAV. But Kuramoto Sensei has this art style that's really hard to emulate, and doesn't really 100% percent transition to animation and his inking just kind of makes it all unique and that also kind of contributes to it. So in terms of art, I really shouldn't act too much of a purist about it. But the resolution is great, the colors are glossier, so no complaints there. The environment is more or less the same with being mechanical and uh, gloomy and the series does its good job of presenting that. The action is also still great, it's still strategic and explosive but with an appropriate amount of restraint where it doesn't go over the top. Uh, the action is still a consistency with how things work in the first season with relying on your beats, uh, working together, but I like with Ron and Fo, it really shows that they don't always have to rely on them to fight. Um, so a majority of what I mentioned in the first series also applies here too, but with some cleanups. And I leave the anima animation at a 9.25 out of 10. Um, naturally, with the returning characters, you got the, you know, return of the last voice cast. And, um, whatever I need to say about the performances, uh, you can refer to my TV series review. Uh, the only performer I will elaborate on is Seki Toshihiko as Quattro, uh, one of the initial new villains. He does great in this performance, but here's the interesting thing. He would also later be the new voice of Milo in the Saint Seiya Hades OAVs, and the original voice actor for Milo was Ikira Shuichi, also most famous as the voice of Shar Aznable in the original Gundam. But it's also funny in Zeta Gundam, he takes the alias of Quattro, and in further addition, Seki would also play La Lacuse in Gundam Seed, the series' respective uh, mass antagonist. You see a pattern where I'm going here? Also, I loved uh, Futamata Issei as Juggler. Granted, Juggler has a more silly gimmick, but Futamata's voice acting made the character appropriately intimidating and sick. Um, he is famous for playing Hypnos in the final Saint Seiya um, OAVs, and as Chai from Shenmue, the greatest game of all time. Uh, the music is just awesome. The opening theme, Peace of the Sun, has a hot-blooded feel that is action-packed and filled with hope in this world on the brink of apocalypse kind of atmosphere. 
The background music still works as it did in Season 1. Once again, my only issue is no modulation in X's voice. So I give the music and voice acting a 9.75 out of 10. Overall, of course, the series ends, uh, the first series ends, you know, very open-ended, so once you finish the first series, watch this OAV. Um, now, all I have to do is read the manga when I have the time. Uh, maybe manga fans will most likely disagree, but I give Beat X Neo an overall score of a 9.25 out of 10.